Joining us on Dog and Deuce is Isaac Draxler from UStateAggies.com. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, thanks. Uh, you know, obviously everyone watching on KPatter TV and over at SouthernUtahLive.com and of course listening over at DogAndDeuce.com, they don't know our, our recording schedule, but we, we kept this, this fine gentleman waiting a while, and I apologize, but thanks for staying up late with us. We really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Anytime. So, uh, you know, we want to start talking Aggies, you know, uh, we have, we've struggled last year. We went into the TV format. We kind of had a, a hard time getting the juggling the format in all three schools, but we really want to make a concerted effort to talk more Aggies. Uh, and I think, and I don't know if you heard our college football preview show, but I think the Aggies are posed for a, a big season this year. And we were, uh, dying to get you on and get your thoughts. How do you think, what is the prognosis for the season? Yeah, it seemed like you guys were kind of split, and uh, and that's that's normal. I mean, I definitely understand that. It's uh, it's not going to be an easy easy season by any means. I mean, you look at the the way the schedule breaks out. Um, you know, playing Utah, and then the next week playing Washington. So those could be two pr- you know really tough games, and then uh, the shift in the divisional games with uh, Fresno State and San Diego State, um, both in the same year this year. Um, and then really all the games, all the tough games, um, pretty early in the season, which could be, could be a positive, um, you know, depending on the health of the team and Chucky Keaton. But, um, so it'll be interesting. I mean, I think, I think everybody's kind of on pins and needles as far as, you know, making sure Chucky stays healthy, making sure Kyler Fackrell and some of the guys coming back from injury, um, are a hundred percent, but, um, but other, the way I look at it is, is I think it all comes down, um, you know, the difference in a in the season is going to come down to the Boise State game number one, and then that stretch of Utah and, and Washington, and then obviously it's always nice to beat BYU at the end of the season um, to kind of put a cherry on top of the the season. But the the number one goal is the Mountain West Championship, and and really that road goes through Boise and Utah State gets them at home, so it'll be a good game. Yeah, that uh, that BYU rivalry has is intensified in recent years, and it's a lot of fun. How do you feel about playing them on the the last game of the year? That that's a big one. Yeah, I have I have mixed feelings about that because it, it could be a huge game or it could be a pretty meaningless game. Um, it's never meaningless. I mean, obviously, but um, but it's not going to win the uh, Mountain West Conference Championship. It's not going to. Uh, necessarily be the, the biggest game of the season um but that that week you know it's going to be huge it's the last game of the season and in the week of um thanksgiving and everything um it's at home and so yeah it is going to be a, a big game so um it, it's just kind of weird to be the last game of the season talk about i mean over the last three years you know the the aspirations or the expectations up in logan i mean since if you go back to 2012 they've you know, the year before they were seven and six. That was, 2011 was sort of the start of the run of the Aggies that we know today. Um, as Utah State, per, a person who covers Utah State, as well as a fan, talk about how those expectations have helped the team with recruits um, and, you know, and Coach Matt Wells, his expectations and what he expects out of the guys week in and week out. Yeah, absolutely. That's actually something I've been um, thinking about and talking about a lot lately in the last couple of days. Um, we just, at UStateAggies.com, we just submitted, or we just um, um, wrote about the the uh, final depth chart of the uh, fall camp. And so if you look at that depth chart, one, the depth is, is better, a lot better than it used to be. I mean, I remember back in the days, you know, first couple of years of Gary Anderson, where they were playing the amoeba defense, you know, no guys with their hand in the ground. They just had 11 guys running around, you know, no, no defensive line depth or, or anything. So um, this year, you know, the defensive line depth took a hit with a, uh, with a car crash, unfortunately, but, um, but across the board, the depth has improved. Um, you know, if you look at it, they had a, they had a pretty good signing class this year, but um but really only one return missionary freshman and one redshirt freshman are on the two deep depth chart. So, um, so, you know, these, these highly touted freshman recruits aren't just coming in and, and uh, starting right away. 
or um, or even junior college guys that that were recruited by by some high profile teams. They're not just walking into a starting job. Um, there's guys that have been there, you know, for a couple of years, even if it's a JC guy as a senior or um, somebody like that, you know, somebody that came in as a freshman and took a couple of years and, and a redshirt year, they're kind of stepping up to uh, to take those places, even even walk-ons, you know, which has been a great program. Um, you know, they're not coming in and, and breaking, you know, breaking into that too deep um, because of the, the depth in the program. So it's it has come a long way. And I mean, and w- and what about you know, as you talk to fans and you analyze games week in week out, what about the expectations? I mean, it it really is a beautiful thing that was started by Gary Anderson and continued on by Matt Wells. I mean, this year I think Dog had him going ten and two. I had eight and four. And if I told you back in you know two thousand five that they'd have <laughs> runs of you know seven and six, eleven and two, nine and five, ten and four. And the next year they're going eight and four. I bet I could have won a lot of money, you know, because think- right. people would not have even like you're crazy. Um, talk about how those expectations translate to fan participation, excitement. I mean, just from the people you know and talk to. Yeah, it's it's translating for sure. I mean, um, fan support or, or fan excitement is tends to to lag behind a little bit. Um, as far as ticket sales and some of the some of the excitement, um, but all all you have to do is is look at you know Maverick stepping up and and uh, paying paying a lot of money for the uh, the stadium naming rights, um, some of the donations that the Aggies have received um, recently, and just improvements in the fan experience um, in general um, have come have come a long long way. Um, as far as as far as that goes, so the the excitement is there, and I think it, it is a, a true program. Um, like I mentioned, not just the players, but the the facilities and the the fans are uh, are definitely coming around to uh, to to showing that. And then um, I think the the big difference is, or or what kind of everybody is waiting on is is winning some of those big big games. I think Washington would be a big win. Obviously, Boise would be a big win because um, we could turn that into a, a real rivalry instead of just uh, a rivalry on paper. Or a, um, you know, Boise. Basically, everybody thinks Boise so much above you know everybody else in the Mountain West Conference that um, that would be that would be a nice rivalry to have. Well, I think I think this is the year that they get Boise State. I mean, I I don't know, man. I'm just so sick. of of, of those blue, the blue turf and those ugly orange and blue uniforms. Um, I'm dying for, for the Aggies to take them over. And I think this is the year. Chucky's back. Uh, I, I, I don't think there's going to be a better opportunity to take down Boise State than, than they have this year. How do you see that battle going? Yeah, it'll it'll be interesting because um, it could be the only year that, that Chucky plays Boise State. Um, well, she's been injured when the Aggies have played Boise State in the in the past couple of years, so that that is obviously an, an interesting dynamic. Um, but I'll tell you one thing that that has to change from last year is that returning offensive line and, and returning defensive line really manhandled the Aggies at at times at, at Boise State. So I mean, you can look at JHIA and and their uh, quarterback from last year and a few things as as far as you know, people they lost and, and different things, but Boise State didn't win win the game against Utah State last year only only based on JHI. So um pretty much anybody a, a Mac truck could have driven through some of those holes that the uh, offensive line created. So that has to change. You know, and going along the lines of recruiting, you know, if I say defense we're gonna talk about factoral and vigil and, you know, centers. What are the depth is getting better, as you indicated. Who are some of the guys that you expect to sort of come out of the woodworks and make big plays uh, for the Aggies that might not be getting a lot of talk, a lot of talk right now, a lot of run? Yeah, I think that starting defensive line with David Mawala, um, Ricky Ali Fua, and uh, Jordan Nelson. Those those three guys are just really, really solid players. I mean, Jordan Nelson, if you go back. Um, and watched the Utah game from three years ago and two years ago. He had huge games. 
um, in those two two games as, a, as an underclassman and, and a walk on at Utah State, and now he's a senior. Um, Ali Fu is really stepping up and being a leader on that on that line, and Mawala is a guy who's as talented as, as the Aggies have had for a long time. He's a guy that he actually started at Arizona State, um, ended up going to a to a JC, and then um, and then coming to Utah State for his last two years. He really only played. I mean, I would maybe half the season he he played for the Aggies last year. Um, you know, he got in here and there to, but he basically got here so late that he he wasn't in game shape and and hadn't really um, you know hadn't had camp to get used to things. Now he's had an off season and a camp and spring ball and everything to to get used to it. So those those three guys are going to play a lot better than um, than a lot of people think. It's definitely the uh, the depth behind them that, that has to step up a little bit um, with the loss of Travis Seafelt, and then um, Devin Centers is solid. He could play he could play nickel or corner or either of the safety positions. Um, and then the uh, the guy that is going to be playing next to him will either be Marwin Evans or John Trell Rockmore. And so those two guys are kind of still battling um, a little bit, and I think. Marwin Evans will probably be the uh, the starter, but I think Rockmore will play quite a bit because um, just because Evans more of a strong safety um, that they like to to walk up into the box and and do a few things um, differently with him. But Rockmore is a guy that's only a redshirt freshman, and he he's uh, he's got all the talent in the world to to be really really good. So that defense, there are some new guys, um, but a lot of those guys played played a lot the last few years, like I was saying, with the defensive linemen um, coming back and, and uh, Jalen Davis and, and a couple couple guys that were junior college transfers last year now are seniors that are that should be uh, should be pretty solid at the cornerback position with Deshane Hines and uh, and some guys like that. So and how uh, I'm the, oh, okay. go ahead. I I was just gonna say I'm not worried about the defense. I think the defense will um, with that system and with uh, with the way um, Kevin Clune calls it and, and everything, I think they will be a pretty solid defense this year. Well, and that brings me to my next question. You know, you mentioned Kevin Clune. You know, h- how do the newer coordinators affect the play on the field? You know, that's been my big worry with Utah and even with BYU to an, to an extent. And, you know, Matt Wells has done such a good job. But when, you know, you're you got new co- newer coordinators – how does that translate to play on the field? Yeah, I think Clune is uh, is a hundred percent carbon copy. If anything, I think Clune's just a little bit more experienced, a little bit more. Um, uh, I don't know what how to explain it, but he's he's just a little bit more experienced in this play calling. Um, I'll give you one example that that game against Utah a couple years ago. It was a corner blitz that really allowed the uh, the youths to get their offense going on on a third and long. Um, Coach Orlando decided to to corner blitz, and uh, and Travis Wilson hit hit his receiver. I don't remember who it was, but for for a good gain, and they kicked the field goal, and then they kicked that onside kick. So the Aggies had them had them backed up third and long, third and like fourteen or fifteen, and obviously they don't stop them. That was a huge turning point in that game. So I think Clint will be fine. I'm not worried about that. It's going to be just as good um, of, a, of a defense. Heupel is um, is kind of the same. Hope I think Aggie fans are hoping um, that he can bring a little bit more experience, a little bit better play calling at times, um, maybe a little bit um, better use of of the weapons the Aggies have, whether it's the running game, whether it's the tight ends, you know, throwing the ball to the tight end. Or um, you know, getting the playmakers that they have in uh, in space and and taking advantage of their their skill. Obviously, Chucky Keaton as well as how he uses him and uh, and that kind of thing. So it'll be interesting to watch. I think Typhoon's definitely the the big unknown. Be just because not necessarily that he he brings a different system or or a different philosophy or anything, but I think it it is a little bit to be seen how he uses some of the some of the weapons they have on offense. 
Okay, and and I hear where you're coming from. I, I I'm I'm in agreement with you. You know, I think the defense is going to be strong up there in Utah State. It seems like it has been at least for the last five six years. Um, the real question mark is going to be on the offensive side of the ball. Can they keep Chucky healthy? You know, um, will the running game? Uh, how much will Chucky have to run? And can he only run when it's absolutely necessary? My question to you is: that They have some really good receivers up there, but they're going to need more more than what they've seen over the last few years. What receivers can we look for to, you know, to be a scoring deep threat? Yeah, I mean, um, they had a few nicks and, and bumps and bruises this fall camp. Um, but when you have a guy like Devontae Robinson, who, if you watch that BYU game, he burned the uh, BYU defensive backs all night long. Um, he's the, the really the fourth receiver behind um, Hunter Sharp and Brandon Swindle, um, and then the slot receiver Andrew Rodriguez. So, um, and they're even playing Kennedy Williams, who is a running back at, at the slot as well. So, um, so having him as your fourth best receiver, um, I, I think all three of those guys. Um, in, in Hunter Sharp and, and Devontae Robinson and Brandon Swindle have all proven that they can be deep threats and um, and really threats in general. I mean, they're pretty well-rounded receivers as well, even on the fly sweeps and, and different plays as well. So I think I think all all three or four of those top receivers um, can get the job done. Obviously, Hunter Sharp is out for the first two games, so that hurts against Utah. Um, Southern Utah is the first game, uh, so that doesn't make it a big deal. But um, against Utah, that hurts to not have Hunter Sharp. Uh, but Devontae, you, you slide Devontae Robinson into his spot um, for that game, and, uh, and I think it's pretty solid. So, yeah, it's, it, I, I, in my opinion, it comes down to the offensive line. I mean, I saw saw games against Utah State, you know, where I was standing on the field or, or in the stands where, um, you know, against Boise and even against like a, a team like Wyoming, where the uh, the offensive line is just just nasty. I mean, they're just they're just hitting people and and uh, playing harder than than anybody else. And, and that's what the Aggies need to do this year, I think. So, how do you see Chucky Keaton fitting into this? You know, my big concern is obviously his health. Uh, that's mm-hmm. been an issue, but also, you know, last year watching him when he was healthy, he didn't seem like freshman Chucky Keaton he, he I don't know if he was missing a step or or what it was do you think he he can be fully recovered and get back to his old form yeah I think he I think he can um but if if anything else if, if nothing else I guess if he can be 100 percent healthy um scramble a little bit when he needs to and he can um, be healthy enough to obviously play and throw the ball and hand the ball off um I think that that's going to go a long ways. Um, I agree. I, I think he was really dynamic. He was a really great, great threat running the ball um, when he was when he was younger, and I think he can get back to that. But if if he's not, um, I think it it will be enough for him to just to be able to scramble around a little bit and 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 really just take advantage of some of the other threats. But he's obviously a a dynamic weapon that that would be nice to have in the in the running and throwing game. So now my next question is kind of as about the conference as a whole. Now I'm looking at the conference, and it seems to me that it's it's stronger than it's been in a long time, maybe even ever. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, how does how does this competition? Uh, how do you view the competition going into the season? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest unknown or biggest question mark heading into this season is going to be how bit, how good is uh, is Fresno going to be and how tough is that game going to be because uh, we saw a couple of years ago when the Aggies played in the, the Mountain West Championship game at Fresno. It's not an easy place to play. And then, um, you know, going to San Diego State, they're one of those teams, in my opinion, that, that either looks great or they look horrible. I mean, last year they had some games where they would just look horrible, completely horrible, and and got beat, you know. And and Fresno won the division just by default, and uh, and so it was pretty. That other other division wasn't very good. Um, 
in the mountain le- mountain division was was really good last year with with Colorado State and Air Force and Utah State and uh, Boise. So I think Air Force will still be a solid team. Colorado State will be, still be pretty good. Um, Boise's still Boise. I think Wyoming and New Mexico. I mean, a lot of these teams are going to be improved. So that'll uh, that'll be interesting to watch. I think it'll it'll uh, make for an interesting year because I don't think any you know all the teams are becoming better programs so there's less um automatic wins so it'll it'll be an interesting season for sure yeah especially in that division uh that that's i mean that's what worries me i mean this is definitely a everyone's always worried about boise state but man just going through this like you said air forces they're always tough and watch those chop blocks man they love to they love to chop block um yeah i it's, it's gonna be brutal man it really is uh so, I'm still sticking with my ten and two, though. I'm still sticking yeah. with that. Um, I mean, looking at the division in more depth, uh, had me question a little bit, but I, I believe I believe this is the year. So I gotta ask you, what? Where do you see the Aggies finishing up? How, what is the re- your record that you have them picked? I'd probably go with with the ten and two as well. Yes, um, yes, I think. <laughs> I think the uh, things, you know, work out pretty well in conference um, to, to come out with maybe one loss um, or no losses. But um, but the Utah game is obviously going to be a tough one. And, and uh, you know, none of those games are going to be, be easy, like, like we already mentioned. I think that some of the tougher ones are obviously at Air Force, at Fresno, at San Diego State. So we'll see. Isaac Draxel, UStateAggies.com. We appreciate you coming on the Dog and Do Show. We'll check back if you're willing. We won't keep you up as late next time. Four weeks in when we have some game <laughs> tape to look over and see uh, see how the Aggies are. Maybe after the third week, after the Washington game, see how the Aggies are setting up for the conference run. Sounds good. Yeah, that'll that'll be interesting to see what uh, what happens those first couple of weeks, and then actually be a buy and jump right into conference conference games. So. Absolutely. So, you know, James did mention UStateAggies.com. I do want to to let everyone know, though, our, our viewers and listeners, to follow you on Twitter. It's at AggieUp, at A-G-G-I-E-U-P. Great follow. Great follow, especially if you follow the Aggies. Uh, you cannot be without it. Again, Isaac, thank you so much. I apologize for keeping you up so late. No, no problem. It's fun. Thanks, guys.